Hey everyone, in the news this week, Alec Baldwin's going to be charged with involuntary manslaughter over the accident on his film set last year, and in response his lawyers come out all guns blazing, except in his case it's just a metaphor, Alec. Rishi Sunak was fined by the police for not wearing a seatbelt, and even Jimmy Savile was better behaved than that Rishi. Admittedly it does mean he'll stay true to his word about helping with the government finances, in so much as he's going to be contributing about £100 to them. This puts him about 20 quid ahead of Naeem Zahawi, the former Chancellor who is of course under investigation by HMRC. Astonishing really, although if you're going to be out of office in two years anyway, what's the point in maintaining a shroud of decency? Also, Ukrainian President Zelensky was pleading with Western governments for some tanks. I'm not sure if the MOD has any spare tanks kicking around, but I do know a whole bunch of ambulances sat around doing not a lot these days, if he's interested in any of those. Junior doctors are apparently going to be the next ones to go on strike, although that does mean you might be able to see a senior doctor, so swings and roundabouts, I guess. But maybe the largest story this week was the downfall of New Zealand Prime Minister Arden, who decided to jump before she was pushed as a number of grossly short-sighted policy chickens came home to roost. Much of this started with her COVID lockdown policy that went beyond punitive to bordering farcical, especially when it did nothing to prevent COVID entering the country, all while people's lives and businesses went to the wall. A really good example was Charlotte Bellis, a New Zealand lady who was in the Middle East when she found out she was pregnant. She was then banned from re-entering New Zealand and ended up having to travel to Afghanistan because it was the only country she had a visa for. To clarify, this was a pregnant, unmarried woman and she was treated better by the country run by the Taliban than the one run by President Arden. I'm not sure if you know the old joke that if you leave alphabet soup on the stove for too long it could spell disaster. Something else that spells disaster is making it next to impossible to enter a country that's highly reliant on international tourism. Today the borders may be open again but the industry is going to take years to recover if it ever does and meanwhile the cost of living has gone through the roof not helped by an environmental policy that makes the Scottish government seem vaguely coherent. One initiative to help the economy was the policy Kiwi Build which aimed to construct over 100,000 houses of which only a thousand or so ever actually got built and everything's been set against a backdrop of a crime wave that's made New Zealand look more like New York in the 1970s. The government made a huge deal about its ban on guns but it's done very little to actually put a stop or even a pause to violent crime or theft which has rather depressingly seen criminals increase recently target basic shops selling things like food. So to sum up, if I ever meet the man who invented zero, I'd say thanks for nothing. And most New Zealanders feel exactly the same way about their former Prime Minister. Alright, see you next week. Flat these, click subscribe.